Hey everyone, and welcome to this demonstration of how to do A-B testing with Unleash. My name is Frederick, and I'm here today to give you this demonstration. And I want to talk a little bit about why this is important. So here at Unleash, one of the things we really care about is developer efficiency and making development teams move as fast as they can. Because we believe that in doing so, there's a lot of room for experimentation and finding out what works and what doesn't. And in the end, that really helps you build your product and it helps you improve upon your product. And the amount of times you can improve upon your product is really dependent on how fast you can move. So it's really something we've put a lot of thought into. Now, we're going to be doing a demo today and I'm going to show you how Unleash makes A-B testing extremely easy. So the way we'll approach this is from the perspective of a fictitious travel company. And as you can see, I have a landing page in the background here. Now, this company is interested in seeing if changing the text and imagery on their site will lead to an increased conversion. So we have two pages here. One's this landing page and one is this search page that you can navigate to. And we're going to measure what effect changing the landing page has on this conversion rate. And you're going to need a couple of things to do this. First, you need to have an Unleash instance. And if you don't know what Unleash is, you can go and check us out on GitHub. We're an open source feature management solution, and we have an enterprise solution as well if you're interested in that. But you need an Unleash instance, whether you host your own or you buy one from us. And once you do that, you have a management UI that you can set up feature toggles and interact with. And then we have SDKs that handle the integration with code on the other side. So what I'll be showing today is how to manage the integration with code and how to use the feature toggle uh, in order to create your experiments. So what I've done here is I've just done a little bit of pre-setup and we have a feature toggle here called travel landing. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. And this feature toggle it's just set up with the most basic activation strategy we have, which is either it's on or it's off. I'm not going to go too deep into strategies now, but you can do some really flexible things with strategies um, in terms of deciding what amount or which segment of your user base you want to activate the feature for. But what is more important right now is the variance tab. So Within the variance tab, you can see we have defined two variants here. So one is tent and one is called Northern Light. So that's the name of the variant. Also notice that each variant has a distribution of 50%. Now this means that the users that come to your site will be distributed evenly between these two variants. So if we go back to our landing page now, you can see that we have a landing page here now and the variation here is, is tent. Um, but someone else who comes in, they might get Northern Lights. So it depends on where you are in the distribution. What is important is that once you have received the distribution, so once I have this distribution or this version of the website, it's tied to my user ID as default. Uh, you can override and, and control this, but it's tied to my user ID. So I will get the same variation every time I go to the website. So if I reload, I won't suddenly get another site. I will get the same variation that I received. So uh, you don't need to worry about exposing your users for different versions of your website every time they um, go navigate to it. So next up, let's go ahead and review the code. And I guess what's interesting here is how much work do you actually have to do in order to get this up and running in your code? 
And the good news is that you don't actually need to do that much. And we're in a front end oriented code here. So we're using the Unleash proxy client. Now, bear in mind, we have SDKs for every major language. But if you want to do stuff on the front end or a client facing application, most of the time you want to be using the Unleash proxy because it makes it a lot more performant and a lot more secure. So here we're dragging in the Unleash client from NPM and we are providing these seven lines of configuration. And once we have that started, we call Unleash start and we pass the instance into the app. Now this is React, but it would work the same with any other type of framework you are using. You have the Unleash instance and you can pass it around and do dependency injection or import it into other files as well. So if we go into the app, what we're doing here is we are getting the variant. So we are using the toggle ID here and we're getting the variant name that we are being given in our context. So remember, this is running on the client. So when we're talking to the proxy and the server, there's going to be an evaluation of what distribution or which version are we going to be receiving. So when we call this, we are connecting and we are receiving a version in return. So that will either be the tent version or variant or the Northern Lights one. And once we have that and we can ignore this, um, setup of Google Analytics, we'll get back to that in a second. But once we have our variant, we can create different execution paths based on that variant. So if it's tent, if the variant name is tent, which you'll see that corresponds with the variant names that we have here. So if the variant name is tent, then we want to provide the user with this experience. If the variant name is Northern Lights, then we want to use this landing page. And then we also provide a default here, just in case we turn the experiment off, we want to have something to show. We don't want to show a blank page. And that's all you need. And we really focus on the fact that you can get up and running with this in minutes and be able to focus on the testing and the experimentation and not all the boilerplate that comes with it. We really want this to be easy to do, easy to set up so that you can do as much testing and experimenting as possible. Now, I'm sure a lot of you noticed that we are using Google Analytics here. And this is a conscious choice on our part. Instead of being limited to a set of tools, predefined analytics tools that we create and build into our solution, we concentrate on delivering the best feature management experience and making that as flexible and extensible as possible. And by doing this, we believe that we are leaving, you know, the analytics to the people who do analytics best. And we're also leaving the choice to you whether or not you want to use um, Google Analytics, you want to use Mixpanel, you want to use an open source solution. We don't really care about that. We just care about it being easy to build upon and extend together with Unleash. And it's not just for extensibility and, and for ease of use, but also for privacy as well. We don't want to be the ones who control your data. We just want to be the ones who make it easy for you to connect your data together with Unleash and actually create a real experiment. And we truly believe that this is the best model uh, going forward. All right. So we've taken a look at how to set this up and seen how easy it was. Now let's take a look at what it means in practical terms. So I have the website in front of me here and I have my Google Analytics panel open. 
So what I'll do is I'll refresh this site and I'll head over to the analytics panel and check the real time events panel. Now I've set my app up to track with events, but you could use any analytics tool that Google Analytics offers or whatever tools your preferred service offers. But here we have a overview. There's five active users on the site. We have five view page events. And if we click in, let's go and see, we have four of the view page is tagged with the tent variant. And one, as you can see down here, is tagged with Northern Lights. So we know how many people are landing on our main page. And if we go ahead and clear out this, let's go ahead and see we have a CTA event or call to action event. And one of the people who landed on the main page clicked the call to action button. And the variant that they landed on was the tent variant. So let's go ahead and see if we go back to our events page, what happens if we go to the browse page from the Northern Lights version. Now we navigate it here and we'll go back to our Google Analytics panel and we'll click on the CTA event. And as you can see now we have two CTA events and one is tagged with Northern Lights. So you can really easily get an overview over how many people visited the page, how many people did the action that you want them to take. And you can see if there's any variance between them. And it's really easy to set up. So now, if we wanted to turn off the experiment, we decided that none of the new landing pages work the way we wanted them to work. It's as easy as going to the panel here and hitting this toggle off. And now the feature is disabled for everyone. And if we go back, you can see we now get the default version of our landing page. So now would be a good time to go back to your code and clean up the feature toggle and remove the unnecessary code, which we also provide a lot of tools for in terms of finding and identifying technical depth. One last thing I want to mention is that we have really powerful activation strategies. So let's say you wanted to roll this out to 50% of your customers and you want to run an A-B test on them. It's as easy as creating a flexible rollout strategy and you can mix and match them. And if you're on the enterprise version, you can add constraints and have even more power over where you want to roll out your features. But that's a topic for another lesson. And this has been a demonstration of how to do landing A-B testing. Apologies with Unleash. Thank you very much for tuning in and have a great day.